Let's have a chat about Delphi and what I'm going to do is just go over a few points I want to talk about regarding the Ronald Logan search warrant as released by Anya and Kevin is it from Murder Sheet and then I'm going to move on to talking about staged crimes and for that I am referring to Dr Claire Robertson of um, the School of Law here her thesis that she did for a doctorate in philosophy but she's a senior lecturer uh, at Queensland University and she is one of these forensic criminologist experts in our courts here for both police and for lawyers and uh, she studied staging staging and murders and she used murders from the UK Canada Australia America you know uh, this is a study she did 10 years ago but I don't know how well known it might be with investigators all around the world although she's known as an expert and what she's done different to say people like Douglas this is where I have problems with the CCM because the terminology in the CCM is all about, you know, likely, probably, presumably, whatever, you know, and uh, what? So, Douglas, the, the, it's guesswork. It's not an actual study. So she's used and collaborated with um, a couple of people that did similar stu studies in 2006 and 2008 and her thesis was written in 2010 and so I'll move on through that so what I'm going to do though is start just recording in maybe 20 minute increments it'll make it easier for me to up upload I might even have to wait several hours even before I try to upload but maybe that'll make it easier because um, I want to make you know have a have a little chat it'll be maybe 40 minutes maybe an hour and a half I don't know so okay so this here this is if you want to look up the exact coordinates of the crime scene and the crime scene is the site where the girls were found sure the um, primary crime scene might be where they're abducted from and there is the crime scene of the site where the girls were found, Abby and Libby. And you type in what's given in the search warrant using degrees, minutes, seconds. There's a few ways you can do that, but it's degrees, minutes, seconds. And you want to do it like that. So all in one line, you know, just write this first one out, comma, and then space, and then continue with this. There's no spaces or anything in between you know each of these numerals so you've got the four four zero degree 35 minute which is just like that 21.4 like that okay and then comma space and then minus 86 degrees 38 minutes 23.3 seconds all right, so DMS, and that will pinpoint exactly where the girls were. So it's down on that northeast bank of Deer Creek, okay, opposite the southeast end of, you know, the bridge. And in the search warrant, of course, it's written in such a way as to be throwing a few people off about where the girls were and what they were doing in the time frames. And I just think they are too readily looking for mystery and lies and things like this. I mean, maybe just start, you know, stop and think for a minute. Okay, so it notes Country Road 
300 north and that's the road that Mayor's property is on that um, Kelsey drove around and stopped at the trailhead there opposite Mayor's property. You continue that 300 country road north, continue on that and you get to Ron Logan's property, you know. Um, what they're doing in this search warrant is noting the cross streets, the closest cross streets, which is 575 West joining the 300 N, okay? It's, it's not rocket science, I don't think. It's not anything tricksy or weird about where the girls were. They are naming the, uh, the cross, closest cross street. That, that's all it is. The, you know, when you write a report, for example, when you've got to write up there was an accident or something happened, you are obliged when you're writing up something to put the nearest cross street. It's something that is often asked for, okay? I think this is just normal procedure. It's procedural and it's just how things are written to describe the surrounds of an event etc okay i don't think there's anything in that at all people are trying to make a real meal out of this it also says that you know the last contact was you know at this time the 213 yeah because this is the last activity the girls were using you know known to be alive this is the time when bridge guy bridge troll was filmed or photographed okay and so uh, that's that yeah they were walking in the vicinity of give the nearest cross streets they're on the trails we know this we know they're on the bridge 207 we know that bridge guy was photographed or filmed at 213 and that's that. And then they were found at the scene. And the search warrant is very clear when it's stating, you know, those coordinates are simply where the girl was, girls were found. And these other things were happening around in this area. It's, I think people are trying to find too much mystery nearly. Um, okay, so... I've taken seven minutes to say really nothing, so I just want to keep moving forward a bit more quickly. Um, but excuse me, I've just made notes and things. Um, I wanted to say about the verbiage in the search warrant when they're talking about clothing and items of clothing. And, you know, this is a reason why they might have been, you know, to get the search warrant part of it's to say, I mean, there's a big list of things that they were um, looking for, but some of it was, you know, clothing, bloods hair etc as well as all the devices and you know anything from from cameras and discs including floppy disks flash drives etc but they were looking for clothing and blood and hair and fluid and you know those sort of samples right but the verbiage is was missing not were missing now undergarments were missing undergarments was missing makes no sense T-shirt was missing, makes sense, but T-shirt were missing is nonsensical. Sweatshirt was missing, makes sense. Sweatshirt were missing, does not make sense. So they use the word was, not were, and... You know, brassiere was missing. Tracksuit bottoms were missing. Tracksuit was missing. You know, you've got to think underpants were missing. Bra was missing. Brazier was missing. Yeah. And we'll talk about why people might clothe and unclothe, etc. when I talk about Claire Ferguson's thesis. And probably what I'll do is just talk about the first half of that just briefly. And then... Um, to another summary, go through her summary at another time. Anyway, so those are just things I thought about that. 
The search warrant included for his white two, uh, white, um, two story single family home, his Ford F20, uh, F250 white truck and outbuildings. And, you know, there was a tweet from um, David Kirsten coming out saying, you know, Ronald Logan's being looked at for, you know, probation violation, not for murder. But that tweet came out before um, the search warrant, you know. I guess time and the events show us that maybe Ron is mo more cleared than others, but we don't truly know. I don't think he's the man on the bridge. Sorry, anyway, let's try and race along here. Um, I've noted that, you know, the victims are dead with wounds. The type of we weapon is blanked out, uh, but it does state there's a large amount of blood lost at crime scene. Lost at the crime scene. If there's this other crime scene, well, the blood's not there then, maybe. I don't know. And would bodies taken there already dead and then staged and then cut, would they bleed as much? There's gravity co to consider, but Abby's sitting up. I mean, we'll talk about this more later as well, but, you know, there was blood at the crime scene. It just makes me think, silly old me, think that, you know, the girls were killed there where they were found and in such a way as um, to cause blood loss, which is possibly the um, thing that, yeah, made them die. So, it also appeared the bodies were moved or staged. Moved or staged. Okay? So, it, even moved doesn't mean very far. It doesn't have to mean very far. And um, in staging, it's rare to move bodies. Uh, you know, they might be moved to position them as far, part of staging. And posing can be part of staging, but it's a separate thing. The posing, it's just a function of staging sometimes. So posing can still be used in staging, but uh, yeah, posing can be something separate, something private as well, and not involved in staging. And then it's considered a different act of it's not considered an act of deceit. So no visible signs, no sign of a struggle or fight. And the girls were probably so terrified. Um, what could they do, you know? Yeah, I was wondering about the stage definitions, you know. Um, you know, could it be even one girl made to look like she harmed the other other made it look like the killer cared or made it look sexual when it's neither of those things um because again covering a body with a blanket or clothing or something like that that's not an act of deceit you know people say oh that proves a loved one did it sometimes these happen after the fact yes because people um, care, they might discover the body, be completely um, innocent, and they just want to cover the body. Sometimes, yeah, sure, it's an act of deceit. So anyway, um, because it's all about whether it's to conceal or destroy something at, um, at a crime scene. So, yeah, I mean, it talks about Ron Logan's timing and his asking of the alibis. He had his clock a little bit out, actually. Um, because the video at the transfer station shows from 11.27 to 11.32, but he was actually there a little bit later, near noon. Um, and he hasn't asked for an alibi for that time. And of course the girls went at the bridge then, so no, he's not there disposing of anything, um, from the crime sort of thing. And he was happy to go there. But he just um, asked for his cousin to cover for him going up to Lafayette so that he was seen to not be driving so far and that his cousin gave him a lift. But Ron, you know, 
I believe he did go up to Lafayette in the afternoon. He didn't give his alibi for quite the right time, so I don't know. Sorry, this is rambling. I mean, I mean, I'm not being very crisp. Should I start again? It's 15 minutes. I can't record again. Yeah, and they're using the word likely and everything. And again, I've sort of mentioned a little bit about that, all that guesswork and stuff. It's a very vague term. You know, in the area of, etc., etc., provo provided false info and has a history of violence. Um, okay, and it lists all the things they're looking for, and certainly it seems to be that they're looking for any device at all that might have recorded the deaths of Libby and Abby, but also it seems that they might be looking for evidence of CSAM at Logan's, maybe to tie him in with the clients and of course the person signing off on this was Curtis G Fouts sorry I'm yellow again I really hate how it does this I don't know I've just, I just can't get the lighting right at this time of day to look at a normal color I hope it's not disconcerting that I look like a Simpson so yeah, another thing I noted down was, you know, because I've talked a little bit about the West Memphis Three, and honestly, I mean, the reason why I don't talk about the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial is if you've seen anything I've said about the West Memphis Three, you know what I think about Johnny Depp. So I just haven't touched that one because people just seem to be loving on him so much, and they I don't know if they really realise what they're looking at, but anyway... Um, but I just wanted to know, people, um, not that it might be relevant here, but, you know, don't write off that, you know, younger people can't commit these crimes. Younger people do commit these crimes. Teens kill teens. They do it for a thrill kill or just, you know, because they're just horrible, damaged bullies themselves. You know, people attacked paint and... Lutna, um, that's known as the Shadow Man um, event. She survived, but, you know, three girls attacked Skylar Nice. Elizabeth Alton was killed by a teenaged neighbour. Um, there's plenty of recent things. I mean, look at Darian Brown and the little Cash Gurnan. Um, you know, what do those woods remind you of? Elizabeth Alton was killed in some woods and... Robin Hood Woods is where the West, the real West Memphis Three, which are the little boys that were killed, Christopher, Steve and Michael. They are the little boys. Um, and Monan High Bridge Trails, you know, these settings. Yeah, they're interesting. So Claire Ferguson, senior researcher. Um, she's a forensic, forensic criminologist amongst many other things and she wrote a thesis the defects of the situation a typology of staged crime scenes and i thought well you know we really should be looking at this staged and moved too many people take on board this expression to mean that oh the girls you know they were asphyxiated elsewhere and then brought there and their throats were cut things like this I don't think they're looking at the logistics and maybe they don't understand the science behind it because there's the the likely, the what ifs, the maybes, the probably, etc. And then there's the actual research and the science. So deception, you know, deliberate altercation, alteration of physical evidence by the offender to simulate events or offences that did not occur. For the purpose of misleading another I'm so sorry I can't even read misleading authorities or redirecting the investigation um, and her study took in 141 staged homicide scenes from around the world and the goal was to identify red flags 
that indicates staging by identifying the themes um, in the data, maybe for each type of staged event, right? Because there's the, the car crash style, there's the by suicide, etc. you know, by burglar. Okay, so all these different types have different red flags, okay? Common characteristics include multiple victims or offenders, blunt force or strangulation behind uh, in being behind the cause of death. That ties into some people's theories about, you know, the strangulation or an asphyxiation was what actually killed them and then they're taken there and, yeah. A previous relationship between offenders and victims, and I guess that might lead more into intimate, intimate partner violence, but it doesn't have to be just that. Victims being discovered in their own homes by the offender. Items being disrupted in the scene, but not necessarily removed. The body or weapon being arranged and evidence being cleared up or destroyed and no alibi being established. Staged scenes were separated by type, so staged suicides, burglaries, sexual homicides, accidents, car accidents, self-defense homicides. Is the offender trying to stage or a legitimate or illegitimate death, right? Um, So, you know, it's about recognizing um, the defects. So the incongruities, inconsistencies, improbabilities, and the paradoxes. Um, it's the physical manifestation of a lie, right? So even, no matter what they tell you, even the FBI agents and the really seasoned detectives who are sitting face-to-face -face interviewing people, they can't necessarily identify lies at, an, at a much higher rate than just guesswork, etc., right? They need fact, they need police work, they need evidence to back it all up, okay? So alibis and data and forensics, things like that, okay? And, you know, deception at a crime scene, that's the physical manifestation of a lie. They need to still work through what they're saying, is this a lie? What is the meaning? So they need to learn to approach that scene softly, softly. Approach it very mindfully and go from there. And police work solves crimes. So, you know, there's precautionary acts before, during and after to confuse, hamper or defeat investigative or forensic efforts you know, to conceal the identity of the killer, to conceal their connection to a crime or the crime itself. And, you know, things that aren't staging, but they are precautionary acts, uh, using a mask, clothing or other such disguise to conceal features of the offender, secluded or less traveled location, using gloves, um now deliberate altercation alt alteration of physical evidence at the location where a crime actually or allegedly occurred in an effort to simulate events or offenses that did not occur for the purposes of misleading you know the investigation etc so this is how this has been coined by Gerbeth in 2006 and Turvey 2008 is another study that um, Dr. Robertson uses. So a lot of this, I really feel that what Robert Ives, the prosecutor at the time, meant, I don't think he said, see, it's very hard to find this, I'd, I'd love to see who actually downloaded what he was saying, I don't think he says non-secular either. I think he must say non-sequitur. I think it's to do with staging and I think it's non-sequitur. I think it's the... Um, I think he's... Meaning that 
these things that were done make no sense actually to do with the crime. It's all to do with staging and obfuscation and mis being misleading, okay? It's not necessarily done as part of the crime because it's posing and someone wanted photos, etc. But, you know, it's not to say that they didn't do it. So, for example, relocation of body, perhaps into a car and driving it, you know, or allowing it to roll off a cliff into a body of water. That's staging, right? We've seen that happen in some horrendous crimes. Is it Diane Downs amongst one who put her own children into a car and pushed them into a lake? Staging is not when a family member or a loved one who finds the victim covers them in a blanket, etc. Uh, that's not to thwart, it's only to present... Uh, it, it only presents as staging, it's not to thwart, okay? Physical evidence cannot be wrong. Only in its interpretation can there be an error. So this is why it's important that investigation is done carefully. The scene must not be approached hastily, must be calm and deliberate. They must make calm and deliberate moves. Sadly, when Libby and Abby had been found, of course, there's also, it's not trained police officers finding them is it it's people just traipsing everywhere destroying the scene it's so sad always suspect the worst and take excess precautions don't approach with your mind made up about the crime this leads to carelessness and false moves which can prove disastrous crime classification manual um you know, the training manual used for law enforcement, you know, why was I making a note of that there? I wrote that there. I think, well, because I mentioned that before, the likely, the this, the that, you know, I think it's important. They need to be so cautious and, um, uh, what's the word? And, 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 and and with and moving with such intent every step of the way and make no false moves or don't miss anything just record everything perfectly and then that's the way the crime can be solved because it can be examined later and taken into whole um in staging if the v offender knows the victim and tries to stage as a sex offense often they'll only partially remove clothes you know, so they might not, they might pull down the trousers, but they might not actually take off the underwear. Um, so they might leave the underwear on or just push up a shirt, so not remove the bra, expose the breast, etc. So they're trying to make it look like a sexual assault occurred, but they really don't go as far as um, a true sexual offender would. Um, so, you know, in this kind of type of staging, um, it re that person is really left nude and even if posed as if an assault occur, occurred, you know, the autopsy is going to show that uh, it was staged. There's no sexual offence. There's just absolutely no evidence that an actual assault took place. And I was just thinking about this. This would mean there is, there's no s semen, maybe no hair, no spit, no skin, you know, there's no DNA, there's no DNA at the scene. I do not believe, as time goes on, I don't believe there is DNA, possibly, of the actual offender, but maybe, yeah, there's animal hairs and things that can be clues to lead, you know, to help, um, to help convict someone, but I think that's as far as it goes. So I think that's where the non, um, non sequitur comes in as well. That maybe the staging involved making it look like a sexual offence, but the non sequitur is. I mean, there's no, there's no DNA, and there would be posing can be utilised as an element of staging. Whereas posing itself is assigned, um, posing itself is 
designed to leave a victim in a position which would be considered sexually degrading. Pure posing might be to shock the finder or for the killer's own pleasure. Now, so many people are making out about, you know, was this done to shock? What was shocking? But they're not saying posing. They seemed to realize early on that it was staging, moving, and not posing. Um, because that's how it's written in that warrant. Maybe they've changed their mind, but I think actually it was clear. Pure posing might be to shock or for the killer's own pleasure. It seems that any posing of Abby and Libby was quickly recognized as staging. Okay, I'm just saying what I actually wrote as my notes. Sorry. No. And then I just mention, um, you know, they definitely seem to have been looking for CSAM or even, you know, evidence directly on film or whatever recorded of Abby and Libby at Ron Logan's. And it would seem, though, if the Kleins were involved as well, considering what they're into, why weren't Abby and Libby's images found? Could that have been destroyed so easily and thoroughly? Did it not exist or is it just on a device that's never been found? Most commonly used to hide a close relationship. Staging is most commonly used to hide a close relationship. Um, not in every single case, case but it, it, it should um, narrow the suspect pool, you know. <clears throat> so in 72% of the homicides in this study, um, the offender found the body and, you know, then comes the elaborate show of shock and grief. Um, they might enlist others to find the body with them. 8% involved transporting the body. So in 141 cases studied, two cases were where the body was actually transported to out of 141 cases so moved doesn't have to mean coming in that would be so rare and I think particularly in this environment and particularly leaving them like that because the ones that were it was more to do with um yeah putting them in a car and feigning a road crash not just moving them to a whole other location I mean the uh, I'm just going to stop and start again. <clears throat>